The possibility of Homo naledi overlapping and interbreeding with early Homo sapiens, such as those represented by the Florisbad and Homo skulls, raises significant questions about hominin coexistence and ecological adaptations. This overlap in habitat and time period would challenge established views on ecological rules and the exclusive niches that different hominin species occupied. As to how Homo naledi held on to its primitive ape-like characteristics while living next to big-brained human species, paleoanthropologist John Hawke stated that it's hard to say it was geographic isolation because there's no boundary, no barrier. It's the same landscape from here to Tanzania. We're in one continuous savanna, woodland-type habitat. It doesn't look like they're in a different ecological niche. That's weird. It's a problem. This is not a situation where we can point to them and say they coexisted because they're using resources differently. With a small skull and brain, hunched shoulders, powerful hands and thin limbs, Homo naledi was built for long-distance walking. Fully grown, it stood about five feet tall, was broad-chested, walked upright, and had a human-like face, including a smile that was probably more human than ape-like. Powerful hands imply it was also a climber, who may have spent time in trees. In addition, Homo naledi had limb proportions just like ours, and there is no apparent reason why it could not have used stone tools. So you have this very primitive form of Homo naledi that has survived alongside these other human species for a million years or more. It is amazing the diversity that we are now seeing that we had missed before. Homo naledi, with a smaller brain size ranging from 465 to 610 cubic centimetres and a mix of primitive and modern traits, lived approximately between 335,000 and 236,000 years ago based on current findings from the rising star cave system. This places Homo naledi and the early Homo sapiens from Florisbad in overlapping time frames, indicating the possibility of coexistence in southern Africa. The Florisbad skull is a partial human cranium estimated to be around 260,000 years old. This specimen is often considered an early representative of Homo sapiens or a transitional form between archaic species and modern humans. It exhibits a mix of archaic and modern features, such as a pronounced brow ridge paired with a cranial capacity that suggests an evolving brain structure similar to modern humans. The Florisbad skull is a significant hominin fossil that has been challenging to accurately date. In 1996, Rainer Grun and colleagues applied electron spin resonance dating to a tooth associated with the skull, estimating its age at approximately 259,000 years. However, this dating has been subject to scrutiny. In 2020, paleoanthropologists John Hawkes and Lee Berger, who discovered Homo naledi, challenged the site's context and the dating methods used. They highlighted issues such as sediment mixing due to methane eruptions from the spring vents and the high uranium content in the peat layer where the skull was found, both of which could affect the accuracy of dating. Consequently, Hawkes and Berger suggested that the true age of the Florisbad hominin remains uncertain, emphasizing the need for cautious interpretation of its place in human evolutionary history. According to the competitive exclusion principle, Two species that compete for the exact resources cannot stably coexist. The principle implies that for different hominin species to occupy the same habitat, there must be distinct ecological niches or adaptive strategies that allow them to avoid direct competition. If Homo naledi and early Homo sapiens coexisted in the same region, it would pose questions about how they managed to share the environment without one outcompeting and causing the extinction of the other. One way to explain the coexistence would be through niche differentiation, where each species exploited different resources or occupied unique ecological roles. For instance, Homo naledi might have relied on different food sources, such as more reliance on plant-based diets or scavenging, compared to early Homo sapiens, who might have hunted larger game and used more advanced tools. Homo naledi could have had social or behavioural traits that allowed it to thrive in areas or conditions that early Homo sapiens found less favourable. What's more, at the Ologa Saili archaeological site in southern Kenya, 
researchers unearthed a significant hominin fossil, a partial skull cap or frontal bone, estimated to be between 900,000 and 970,000 years old. This discovery marked the first human fossil found at Olog Sili. The fossil was located in the same stratigraphic layer as numerous Acheulean hand axes and flakes, suggesting it belonged to Homo erectus, a species known for its association with such tools. The site of Ologoseli is renowned for its extensive collection of Acheulean hand axes, with some sites containing thousands of these tools, indicating the area's importance in studying early human technology and adaptation. The skull cap has been attributed to Homo erectus based on its morphology and the contemporaneous Atulian tools found in the same layer. The frontal bone exhibits characteristics typical of Homo erectus, including robust brow ridges and a pronounced supraorbital torus. However, a suggestion by John Hawkes that this site could be attributed to Homo naledi, due to the striking similarity between the partial skull cap and Homo naledi fossils, presents a groundbreaking hypothesis with significant implications for African paleontology. Homo naledi has already challenged previous notions about the timeline of tool use and cognitive development due to the relatively late date of its fossils, combined with its primitive cranial features. If Homo naledi were found to have been present at Ologoseli nearly a million years ago, it would push back the timeline of when this species was believed to have existed and interacted with its environment. One of the most significant implications of identifying Ologoseli as a Homo naledi site would be a major revision of known hominin dispersal patterns. Homo naledi has so far been considered a South African hominin with limited geographical range. If evidence linked this species to a site in Kenya, it would suggest a much broader range than previously thought. This expanded range would imply Homo naledi would have demonstrated the ability to adapt to a variety of ecological niches, from the cave environments of South Africa to the open landscapes of East Africa. The presence of Homo naledi in East Africa would open up the possibility of interactions between this species and other hominins, such as Homo erectus and early Homo sapiens. These interactions could have involved competition, gene flow, or even cultural exchanges. The early Pleistocene was a time of remarkable hominin diversity, with multiple species existing concurrently. The presence of several hominin species in overlapping time frames challenges the linear progression model of human evolution, suggesting a more intricate web of evolutionary paths with potential cross-influences. The conventional evolutionary narrative places Homo erectus as the dominant toolmaker and one of the key progenitors of later hominins, including Homo sapiens. If Homo naledi were present at Ologoseli, it would suggest that multiple human species were experimenting with tool use and exhibiting complex behaviours at different scales of cognitive capability. According to Hawkes, paleontologists would need to re-examine existing fossil records and artefacts with a fresh perspective, considering that what was once attributed solely to Homo erectus might instead be evidence of multiple hominin groups sharing and modifying similar technologies. This reinterpretation would also encourage a more critical look at morphological features and the criteria used to classify fossils within certain species. The use of Atulian tools by Homo naledi would suggest that smaller-brained hominins were capable of more sophisticated behaviour than previously assumed redefining the link between brain size and tool-making abilities. The expansion of Homo naledi into East Africa would imply that this species had a set of unique adaptive strategies that allowed it to survive in diverse environments. If further research reveals that the skullcap shares significant similarities with Homo naledi, this would suggest that Homo naledi inhabited a time and space far beyond its currently known range and time. The site of Ologsalia in southern Kenya is not far from Lake Turkana, which is the outlet for the Omo River in Ethiopia, where the 200,000-year-old Omo I and Omo II Homo sapiens skulls were discovered. If Homo naledi and early Homo sapiens were found to coexist, it would challenge the simplistic view that Homo sapiens always rapidly outcompeted and replaced other hominin species due to superior cognitive abilities.
It would suggest that the early Pleistocene and Middle Stone Age environments of Africa were dynamic and capable of supporting multiple hominin species simultaneously. The potential overlap also raises questions about interactions between the two species. Were there periods of direct competition for resources? Did these interactions lead to the eventual decline of Homo naledi, or was there peaceful coexistence? Could there have been any transfer of tool-making techniques or cultural practices between the two species, similar to what is proposed for interactions between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens in Europe? And most tantalizing, was there any genetic exchanges? For both Homo naledi and early Homo sapiens to exist in overlapping habitats, they must have had significant ecological plasticity, an ability to adapt to changing environmental conditions and resource availabilities. This would imply that Homo naledi had more advanced behavioural adaptations than previously thought, capable of surviving alongside a species with greater technological sophistication. Early Homo sapiens might not have been as dominant in all ecological settings, allowing for the persistence of small-brained hominins. The potential coexistence of Homo naledi and early Homo sapiens suggests several implications. The adaptations that allowed Homo naledi to persist, despite its tiny brain size and archaic morphology, would need to be re-examined. The overlap indicates that survival was not solely determined by brain size or technological prowess. The ecological success of Homo naledi points to a broader range of factors, such as efficient environmental use, cooperative behaviours, or specialised foraging techniques. The coexistence could also provide insight into the evolutionary pressures that shaped both species. The persistence of Homo naledi alongside early Homo sapiens might indicate that different environmental pressures favoured a variety of survival strategies. The environment may have been resource-rich enough to support distinct feeding and foraging behaviours, reducing direct competition. Both species may have faced common threats from predators or climatic shifts, influencing their adaptive paths and survival strategies. The overlap between Homo naledi and early Homo sapiens in Africa would represent a significant deviation from the expected ecological norms of hominin evolution, where one species outcompetes another. It would highlight the complex, multifaceted nature of early human survival strategies and adaptation. The presence of multiple hominin species in a single region underscores the complexity of human evolution, suggesting it was not a straightforward progression from archaic forms to modern humans, but rather a web of interactions and adaptations. Thank you for watching, and please let us know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think the skullcap from Kenya is Homo naledi?